Alright, Pixar, rumor has it that you have a brand new coming of age story for me, so let me hear it. <laughs> oh, well, I, it's not quite finished yet. I'm still working on some ideas. Don't be modest. Tell me what you have so far. Oh, uh, okay. So, uh, I came up with this fun, heartwarming story about a Chinese family adapting to a new culture set in Canada. I also thought of this main character being this adorable Chinese girl. She turns into a bear. What? The lead character. She transforms into a bear. I I don't think we need her to be Great, so it's settled. She turns into a giant bear. What's next? Sir, we're not turning her into a bear. <gasps> what? Why not? Sir, quite frankly, your company has done that idea multiple times now. It barely worked for Brother Bear, didn't work for Brother Bear 2, and it was a complete mess in Brave. I don't think we can throw in another bear settled story until the next decade. I like bears. I've noticed, but we don't really need her to become a bear to tell this story. What in the world is wrong with bears? Nothing. But sir, if I had a nickel for every time Disney released a movie that have our major characters turning into bears, I'd have three nickels. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened three times. Hey, I understood that reference. What? What do you mean? You came up with that reference. Oh, you know what? Never mind. We're not turning her into a bear. Ugh, fine. How about a red panda instead? Did you just choose that animal just because it has panda in its name? A red panda it is! Those guys are cute. We'll sell toys like no tomorrow. All right, meeting adjourned. See you in six months. Wait, what? Wait, wait, wait. No, sir. We won't turn her into a red panda. <gasps> Ooh, that's the title. Turning red. Perfect. Pixar, you've done it again. Oh my god. Fine. We'll turn her into a red panda. Just as long as you promise to absolutely promote and hype this movie in the best light possible, okay? We want people to love this passion project. Oh, people on Twitter already hate it. What can I say except you're welcome? You're welcome. <laughs> We're also not giving it a theatrical release, by the way. We're just going to throw it in Disney Plus. Okay, bye. Oh my God, I hate him. <laughs> Fuck you, Pixar. <laughs> Turning Red is a story that follows a girl who turns into a giant red panda whenever she shows even a slight sense of intense emotion. Although the overall praise received from their previous movie, Turning Red is Pixar's third straight film that has yet again been denied a theatrical release worldwide, but instead is dumped straight to Disney+. Plus. What's wrong, Disney? You were confident enough to release Encanto and No Way Home worldwide, but Pixar is still giving you cold feet? Pixar. Now, I'll be honest, I went into this movie completely blind. I only saw one trailer and it was the initial teaser and that was about it. But since it still carried the Pixar brand, you bet I had to go and check it out myself. Unknowingly not realizing the already polarizing history is generated online. Because, get this, apparently even before the movie came out, the animation community went absolutely apeshit when they heard about this film. Why? Well, apparently it's all because the character design and animation looks weird. Okay? Now, I'll have to be brutally honest here, guys. And it might change the way you see me in these videos. Are you ready? Okay. What I want to say is that I want everyone, not only in this community, but everyone to be aware of that in more ways than one that I can confidently say that I am not a film critic. I'm just a guy who watches movies and complains a lot. So mind you, when I heard about this backlash regarding this movie all because the animation is weird, all I could say is, quite frankly, I don't give a shit. I would say that out of the general criteria I have when rating movies, animation is probably my weakest take. As long as your animation doesn't look like this, I'm going to end up admiring it. There's this thing called creative direction, guys. Not all animations have to look exactly the same. You're giving this movie shit for looking different when Spider-Verse and Mitchell vs. the Machines are right there known and loved for looking different. Fucking Luca was another creative attempt from Pixar. How the hell is that accepted but not this? People are weird, man. Holy shit. So yeah, I don't get the whole issue here to begin with and I don't really care. I won't be judging my feelings on the movie solely because it doesn't look like a Pixar film, guys. Alright, let's get that out of the way. With that said, the movie's not really that great. Like and subscribe? Like, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I wouldn't call it bad, but I certainly wouldn't call it great either. It's just...
okay. Basically, it's harmless. It's just another harmless slice of life movie from Pixar. I've already tackled this in my Luca review, but I'll just summarize it here. You see, Pixar has basically set its standards so high that we basically expect that each of their next release will be a masterpiece. It happened with Onward, it happened with Soul, it happened with Luca, and it's happening now. Granted, Turning Red would without a doubt be some other company's magnum opus, but by Pixar standards, yeah, this was pretty weak. The characters aren't really that interesting. The story is all over the place and the climax, oh god, the climax. But the movie still provides some stuff to be admired. Though the hate, I actually really enjoyed the animation. It gave a pretty loud and creative fast-paced cartoon vibe and I thought it was nice. And gave props to Pixar out of all Disney products that include a character turning into a bear. This movie pretty much did a great job incorporating the bear aspect into a deeper meaning to the story. Congratulations? I don't know, it's just so weird that they still keep turning people into bears. I'm just so confused. So I just looked it up and apparently red pandas are not bears. So whoops. Well anyways, as always, let's take a deeper look into the movie and see what went wrong and what went right. Is turning red just a weird mess or is there a deeper thought that just needs a closer look to be admired? Well, let's find out. This is Pixar's Turning Red. So the movie begins introducing us to our main character, Mei Mei, a 13-year-old girl who is probably the first ever character in Disney history to openly blurt out an English curse word. I feel so moved. <laughs> oh, crap. <gasps> Shame. Also, you know what I found dumb? Her name is Mei Lin and her nickname is Mei Mei. Mei Mei. Motherfucker, those have the same number of syllables. What the fuck is the point of the nickname? We're then introduced to Mei's circle of friends. And yes, as you'd expect, I do not like them one bit. I mean... Miriam's fine, I guess. But like the other two just got on my nerves just a few too many times, especially Abby. Like, I get what they were trying to do. Giving each character a distinct over-exaggeration of one particular trait is nothing new, but good god, this is not how you do it, guys. Priya being a deadpan monotone goth girl is fine, but both her line delivery and movements don't fit well with her character at all. Like, the best example to this is Rosa from Brooklyn Nine-Nine and April from Parks and Rec. They're deadpan and cold, but their movements and interests complement that character. Priya basically shares the same interests and feelings as the rest of the girls. She just happened to just not smile. If that's the case, then why have her be a deadpan character? Couldn't you find another wacky trait that could have served the group well? Just look at this shit. <gasps> Four Four town. Town. Yeah. Come with us. Please. <laughs> Let's go. Good God, fucking show some emotion for fuck's sake. And then we have Abby. Let's burn this place to the ground. What's wrong with that? Hey, it'll clear my mind. Just a little hint. Maybe some of you find this cute. I don't find it cute. Word to the wise out there. Hyper doesn't always equal fun. This kid is just too annoying. It pisses me off. Whenever she's on screen, I can't help but just audibly tell her to shut the fuck up. I love it. Fight the power! Oh, shut the fuck up. In fact, here's a scene that completely summarizes exactly what I'm talking about. My mom cuts his hair at the salon, and I felt it. It's very soft. Whoa. Can I have some? Yeah, Abby. Hook his sister up. <laughs> Speaking of which, we see that the girls are flaunting over a teenage clerk in a nearby convenience store. All except May. Put a pin on that because it'll come up again later in the movie. Oh, and they also established that the group is also obsessed with a boy band named Four Town. We later cut to a Chinese temple where May works and lives. And here we meet her mom, Ming. That's my little scholar. Today, honor student. Tomorrow, UN Secretary General. And yeah, as you can tell, the movie is clearly setting up a story about the family setting high expectations to their child to accomplish the parents' dream and not their own. Oh my god, that's your main attraction? How are you not bankrupt? Fast forward at dinner time, and we get to meet the best character in the entire movie, May's dad. He doesn't really do much in the movie except for a heart-to-heart -heart scene later. But other than that, he's pretty funny as a background character. Some of the kids at school like him. You mean Miriam? That girl is odd. What? Miriam? Bitch, have you met the other two? Now, remember the pin we had earlier? Well, while studying, May somehow starts to think of and think feel something towards the guy. She then proceeds to go on a deviant art rampage and start sketching some shit I am too scared to think of. I do not like this scene. Her mom would catch her in her drawings though and decides to deal with the situation by calmly and rationally taking a deep breath and drive to the convenience store in the middle of the night dragging her child along with her erotic drawings and expose her dead ass in front of everyone. Like a good mother? Yeah, like most point out, Ming is 
something. A lot actually critique that she's too over the top and super unrealistic. To that I say, you never had an Asian mother and it shows. Ming is written to be unbearably overprotective but honestly Pixar did a great job on the dynamic between her and Mei. You can totally see just how much she cares for her family and that her intentions are in the right place though done in the wrong way. Her character is probably the most complex behind Mei herself and overall I wouldn't call her actions annoying since I actually understand her side. With that said, some of the stuff she pulls is actually completely batshit insane it gives me secondhand embarrassment. Oh my god, I would die! But I guess that's the point? But yes, after the incident in the convenience store, this would be the final straw that will break the camel's back, triggering Mei to turn into a giant red panda overnight. Now to save up time, the rule is simple. Mei can turn back into her own self if she's calm and collected, but once she even shows a hint of a strong emotion, either positively or negatively, she turns back into a panda. Simple enough. After a series of unfortunate events, <laughs> I don't like this scene. Awooga! Fucking what? It would then be revealed that Mei's bloodline is cursed with, oh pardon me, inconvenienced with the ability to transform into a red panda. As you know, our ancestor Sun Yi had a mystical connection with red pandas. She loved them so much that she asked the gods to turn her into one. <laughs> what the fuck? What? <laughs> I'm sorry, but there was no possible way to make that line not hilarious. Hey, cool. I always wanted to know the origin of the furries. Thank you, Pixar. Turns out there's a cure that can detach Mei from the monster, and it's in the form of a ritual that's to be performed during a red moon. Coincidentally, only a month away. Now here's a dumb scene. The family mutually decide to wait it out, but the next day we see that Mei is still bothered by the monster, and we see her struggling to reject the panda, begging for it to go away. But like, dude. You were just told that it's gonna be cured within a month. Why are you trying to get rid of it now? Just wait it out, my guy. Grab a blanket, eat some dumplings, and go watch TV. You're living the dream. Her friends eventually would end up finding out about her transformation, and we get this. Please, just me. Shut up. I don't like this scene. If I travel back in time and told the audience in the Ratatouille premiere that one day the very same studio who made this masterpiece would show three young children motorboating a 10 foot tall talking panda, would you think they'll call the police on me or the psych ward? So fluffy. You're so fluffy. Oh my god, wait a minute. Was that a Despicable Me reference in a Pixar film? I've always wanted a tale. Fucking what? And now finally, we get to see our character's main goal to attend the Four Town concert. May also gets to find out that being around her friends keep her calm, which means no more panda. With this newfound knowledge, May goes and asks her mom's permission to go to the concert, in which she then gets rejected. Also, I like this little detail here where May's wearing the very same blazer her mom was wearing in the scene prior. I don't know, I think it's cute. Back in school. Wait, what? Why are you back in school? There's still a chance that you can still turn into the 10 foot tall talking red panda. She can't just stay home for the month? Ming? Don't you think it's much more risky to have your unstable 13 year old daughter wander around a school? You know, the most stressful place to be? Now, at this point, the movie kinda throws a curveball on us. Instead of spending the entire movie hiding her panda, she actually ends up exploiting it for money in the hopes of earning just enough to buy the concert tickets. It'll clear my mind! Just a little hint! It's so cute! Ugh, fine. You're fucking weird. The exploitation would prove to work though as the group slowly earned the money and gained major popularity. Days pass and we see that the whole school is now officially on board the Panda Express. See what I did there? But being $100 short, May would agree to attend a birthday party to finally seal the deal on the tickets. I wanna throw a sick birthday party. <laughs> Dude already made a fucking poster! Bro, she hasn't even said yes yet, but you already have a fucking flyer? Come Friday though, everything seems to not go according to plan as Ming's mother and her aunts would drop by for a surprise visit. Yeah, that's not stereotypical at all, Pixar. Not one bit. Turns out that they're there to keep an eye on Mei and her panda. And here they reveal that if Mei fails the ritual, the spirit of the panda will be bound to her forever. Mei will still end up sneaking out though on her way to the party, where she resumes being a panda. But unfortunately, Viscount Agnes here misread the tour dates and the concert would instead be taking place during Mei's ritual. Which means Mei is faced with a difficult choice. Attend the concert or do the ritual. Now people are pointing out that this dilemma is just downright stupid. But guys, we gotta keep in mind that these are 13 year old stands we're talking about here. The stress would end up with Mei losing control of her panda and maul a kid. Luckily, Ming shows up just in time to break the fight. But not before blaming the incident on Mei's friends and not Mei herself. And I really like this scene. The one-sided argument Ming showcases towards the group is really well done. And Mei downright throwing them under the bus after being established that they're her comfort zone is just the icing on the cake. It's 
really good scene that shows just how much Ming's approval means towards Mei, even if it meant losing her friends. Well, moving on, Mei and her mom drive home, leaving the group alone feeling betrayed. So how long does it take for them to just half-assedly forgive Mei Mei and accept her back to the group? Yep, that makes sense. Fast forward to the day of the ritual, Mei's dad would stumble across the video Mei and her friends have done during their money raising scheme. And we get the heart to heart talk I mentioned earlier. The talk however would sway Mei into keeping the panda and fail the ritual. She'd eventually break out of everyone's grasp and would run away to get to the concert. During the scuffle though, Ming would end up breaking her spirit token and her panda would get loose and once again gain control of her. What, she can jump like the Hulk now? What kind of Scooby-Doo bullshit is this? And here we finally reach the climax of the movie. And yeah, it's pretty boring. They reveal Ming's panda would be the size of Godzilla and the whole climax revolves around everyone trying to turn Ming back to normal. All while both mother and daughter are quote, fighting. <laughs> is this bothering you? <laughs> we just witnessed a Pixar character twerk, folks. Pack your bags, it's over. Really? This is our climax? Like, I know stakes don't really need to be high to make a good movie, but... Really? This was the best you could do? Granted, even I don't know what could have been done better for a climax, but like... There's gotta be something better than this, guys! Luca had a bike race and that was entertaining! This is just... I'm bored. May eventually manages to knock out her mom and with the help from her grandma and aunts, all of them redo their rituals. And I gotta admit, I actually really like this scene. May meeting the 13 year old version of her mom breaking down about never being good enough and sick of being perfect is really well done and a perfect reflection of what May feels with Ming. Even down to the part where they walk down the forest and her mom gradually gets older. And hell, the goddamn hug Ming gets from her mom somehow is really emotional too. You try to make everyone happy but are so hard on yourself and if i taught you that i'm sorry holy fuck it happened she said it guys she apologized the asian mom apologized mom get the camera it's a fucking miracle as the ritual ends, Mei still chooses to keep her panda. Everyone goes back to their normal selves, business is booming, and Ming finally accepts Mei as her own person and gives her the freedom she's longed for for years. No longer bounding Mei to her own expectations, but instead letting her be whoever she wants her to be. And a lot of us never let it out. But I did. How about you? Oh yeah, sure, when she lets something out, it's a gift, but when I let something out, it's a police report. No thanks. And that was Turning Red. Yeah. Is it great? No. Is it bad? Not really. Is it Pixar's worst by far? Not by a long shot. But like I said, the characters aren't interesting. I wasn't really too invested in the story. And that climax was just... Ech. But granted, the movie does look great though. The style is clearly influenced by the likes of some Chinese animations while also taking a lot of inspiration from an anime style point of view. This would be a major factor too as most of their comedy heavily relied on their facial expressions rather than dialogue. Mei and Ming's mother-daughter dynamic is also handled pretty well. This could have easily been botched if not given the proper amount of focus. So I commend them for that. And I do have to admit, the bear really was well incorporated into the storyline. More than it's given credit for. I think a lot of people people overlook that aspect too. Like, I get that we all took the red panda as a metaphor for May's period in hitting puberty, but I think a lot of people didn't catch on that it also served as a symbol for lost heritage that most immigrant families fear when moving to a whole new different country. May keeping her panda is a take where she's finally on her own and has accepted change, no longer burdened on the idea that she has to willfully carry the dreams and expectations set by her mother. True, this also means she's given into the western culture, but the small detail that she still uses her panda to help out with the temple shows a good compromise, something most immigrant families should practice. Yeah, it's weird a lot of people didn't catch that. The red hair plus partying kind of gave it away immediately. But I don't know, maybe this is more of an Asian thing to notice. But hey, that's one of the perks of being Filipino. I'm Latino and Asian. I can claim Encanto as my own, and I can claim this as my own. Suck it, bitches! Overall, Turning Red has a deeper story to tell but struggles to execute. It has its fair share of lows and its fair share of highs. But that doesn't mean I still didn't find myself entertained in some certain parts of the film. So yeah, it's weird, it's a mess, but the heart is still there. And that's why I'm giving Turning Red a 5 out of 10. That's today's video. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna go to bed. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps out the channel a lot. Have a great day and a great life, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!